Hello class, welcome to a room 222 Photoshop tutorial. Today's project is a typography project. And a typography project is where we are using words to make an image. I'm going to show you a couple of examples. So if you go to Photoshop Tools and Resources, Stock Photos, Typography Examples, here are several different ones. So the first one is letters. This one, it created a letter using letters. Next is a lion. So they used words that describe a lion into the shape of a lion. This one is the map of the world. So they took the names of all the countries and created a map with it in the shape of what the countries are. So they took words that describe Michael Jordan and formed together to create the Michael Jordan figure. Same with PlayStation. PlayStation, they use the logo and words that describe PlayStation. And as you can see on these, they are all of the words are either vertical or horiz horizontal, except for the map. Whenever you create yours, I would suggest two keeping it consistent. So I would either stick with all horizontal or all vertical and then adjust it from there. You can make it larger, you can make them smaller, you can make them cramped, you can extend them but I would keep that consistency of either vertical or horizontal. And when we do this project, it is going to be a choice project. You will not need to do my, ver my version and then yours, because this will take a very long time if you do it correctly. I will show you my version. It's not completely done yet. But what I did was I took a tree, I added a gradient, and I made, it, I made the gradient fall-like and I'm using now words that describe fall. So I have like November, apple, pumpkin, spice, beautiful, autumn, leaves, crunch, cozy, all sorts of things like that that describe fall and I'm putting them within this outline of a tree. And then I called it the autumn experience. So now you will go to stock photos and you don't have to use these but these are some examples of things that you can do. I have a whole variety in here. If it's a JPEG, you will need to make it into a PNG. There are a bunch of different animals. Um, there's other things like a diamond, a rose, um, a map of the United States. Or you can pick something on your own. To whatever outline you choose, it needs to have some sort of a background. So the image that you pick might already have a background with it, which is fine. Otherwise, if it doesn't, you will need to create one. So let's go to Photoshop. I'm going to open up my tree, PNG. So I have already, this was originally a JPEG. So I took away the background and then I also outlined the tree, so as you can see, I'll pull up the other one as well. So as you can see on this tree, the outline is not very pronounced. So what I did was I used a very small black brush and I traced the outline. And then I deleted the background and I saved it as a PNG. And this is what it looks like. Okay, so I need to put this onto a background now. So I'm going to go to New. Okay. I'm going to make a copy of this background. First I'm going to unlock it because we're going to use this later. And I'm going to make a copy of it, duplicate copy. And now I'm going to create a gradient. So you want to go over to your paint bucket tool and you're going to select gradient. And as you can see mine is already set up for my autumn feature. So I'm going to say OK. And then I'm going to go to diagonal. You can do any way you want and I have this very nice gradient now. I'm going to pull forward my PNG of my tree and I'm going to move it over, drag and drop it. And I am going to transform it and put it onto my picture. Okay, so I have my tree on here and it's for the most part in all of the coloring of the gradient. Alright, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to make a duplicate copy, duplicate layer of my gradient background. And I'm going to rename these. 
So my layer one is my outline of my tree. This is going to be my background. This is going to be my white layer. And then this is my background with lesser opacity. What I want to do to add a little bit of more depth to this picture, lessen the opacity inside the tree to make the words stand out more. So for instance, I am now going, and you're not going to be able to see this, so you have to make your background invisible. And we're just going to lower the opacity some. And I want to show you now the importance of that white layer. So for instance, if I had lowered this opacity without a white layer there, it would just go to the checkerboard, which is not what we want. So you have to have a white layer or some sort of base layer that's going to help you out. So now I have this lesser opacity. I'm going to bring back the background layer. I'm going to select it. And now I'm going to use the eraser tool and I'm going to erase the inside of this tree. So again, using the eraser tool, you're just going to erase the inside of the tree to bring forth this lesser opacity background. Okay, as you can see now, I have erased the inside of the tree, and you can see over here on my thumbnail too that the inside is erased. So now if I would uh, make this invisible, it matches the lesser opacity background. Now I'm going to create what is called a group or a folder. So I'm going to go down here to new group, and I'm going to use this grouping to put all of my words in that describe my image. What I would suggest that you do is that you write down a long list of words that describe your image ahead of time. I would not suggest creating all of the words ahead and then having to find them on your picture and move them around. I would just go word by word by word. You are allowed to repeat your words, that is fine, uh, but there should be a wide variety of them that describe what your image is. So ahead of time, I have already created a list for my fall or autumn picture. So I'm going to start using, I'm going to create a new layer in that grouping. Actually, I'm going to label it grouping words. And I'm going to create a new layer in it. And I'm going to start with my words.
If you want to transform your picture or your letters, warping them or something like that, you should you could right click either here or here and it'll give you the option to warp your text. Okay, as we are doing our text, you should pick a text that matches your image. Um, I would suggest something that's easy to read. You should have probably used cursive. And I'm just going to work my way up the tree, and that's what you should do as well for your image. Start in one area and kind of work your way up. And eventually, all of the pieces in this tree will be filled with words. Something you can also do, too, is if there's some places that you just need maybe a little image or something like that, you can add something like a small clip art piece. So, for instance, I would want to use, or I would like to use, the black leaf. I'm going to use a little black maple leaf. So I'm going to make this a PNG real quick. And then for instance, if I wanted to just maybe add it into like this area here. I could, and then I could add my words around it. It shouldn't take up much of your image, but if you needed to just add a little bit in the areas that you can't fit a word, it would be perfect. So now it is your turn to go start. So again, just as a quick reminder, you need an outline of an image. It can be one that is already created, or you can create it yourself, and it needs to have some sort of a background that it is either with your image already or that you create it with it. And I also want the inside of your outline to be either darker or lighter than the background. And then your words should be contrasted with that. If you have any questions, please let me know. Off you go to do your own.